Thank you, everybody. It's great to be here on the stage. And what an honor to be part of this last session. And what's so great about this last session is now we're talking about the action phase of it. We have the Eat Lancet at targets, and now we need to figure out how do we take these targets and put them into action with policymakers and also with businesses, national level governments. And that's what we're going to be talking with you guys about for the next 15 minutes. A pilot project that we started last year in terms of taking the Eat Lancet targets and working with four different businesses and translating them into action. And these guys are the bold people that have taken that first step. Just as Gunhild you know, said at the very start, we need those leaders. It's an honor to welcome on stage some of the leaders in this in terms of starting this great food, great food transformation. And I would like to welcome to the stage right now Freddie Brew from one of the largest cruise ship companies that we have, Hooteruten. Thank you, Freddie. And Yannicka Yingrid from TGI Fridays. Thank you. Thanks, Freddie. Thank you. So, you guys have been part of this pilot now for about six months. And if you guys could just start with telling us a little bit about what you do and what your business does and why you wanted to be part of this. Please. So, yeah. Yannicka. Um, TGI Fridays is a global American brand. And in Sweden and Norway, we are a part of Umo Restaurants, Scandinavia's leading restaurant company with uh, about 450 restaurants and cafes in uh, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Uh, in our sustainability strategy, it's a um, very um, clear priority that we should um, have sustainable uh, food on our menus. And uh, this pilot helps us uh, with the baseline we, uh, we need for improvement. Okay. Freddy? Yeah. Hurtaruten uh, is actually the world's uh, leading expedition cruise line company. Uh, today we have 16 ships uh, traveling to the pristine waters of Antarctica, Arctic, and of course the uh, Norwegian coast, which is most uh, known maybe, uh, where we have 125 years uh, of uh, history. Um, we are um, aiming for being the greenest cruise line in the world and changing the whole cruise industry. Uh, in just a couple of weeks now, we are launching our new ship, the Royal Amundsen, which will be the first ocean-going ocean uh, electric hybrid cruise ship in the world. So we are quite amazed and looking forward to that. It's just a few weeks from now. Um, and of course, sustainability is, is important to us. And uh, I think um, also that was a decision why we, we, we banned single-use plastic. Uh, and I think we was one of the first in maybe the, uh, of the world's most uh, largest travel industries which done, did that. Um, our motivation is uh, uh, when it comes to foods. So this is not new for us. Um, Five years ago, we, we, we started a big turnaround in Hurtruten, and uh, then we was uh, throwing uh, frozen tiger prawns from Bangladesh and processed frozen pizza, which actually was what we were selling on board, uh, throw board and, and replaced it with a Norwegian fresh produce from short travel great producers in, in, in Norway. And, uh, and uh, so it's quite easy for us. For, for us, this is the natural next step and, yeah. and reducing the, the emissions from uh, our food offerings. Now, we've got these targets. We know that we have to act, and each one of us needs specific action. And I think that's what a lot of us are looking for. What do I do? What can my business do today? And can you give us some specific examples of what your business is doing today to start? Annika. Yeah, um, I mean, we have had uh, many green alternatives on the menu for, for a long, long time. But um, uh, now we have launched, for example, we have launched a Beyond Meat Burger with a great success in uh, all the restaurants in Norway and Sweden. Uh, today you can get all the burgers vegetarian if you like to. Uh, we are always looking into to opportunities uh, on more healthy and sustainable food. Um, but we are also doing um, a project in, in all the brands in Numa. We have, uh, we are, have joined uh, Kut Mat Svin, a Norwegian project to, to reduce food waste. We have signed an agreement with the authorities that we should reduce our food waste with 50% until uh, 2050. 
Mm. And um, we are today, we are measuring food waste in all the restaurants every day. We register on that and we report on that. Oh, that's great. And you, Freddie? Yeah, so uh, first of all, we have been taking a company decision that uh, across all kind of menus and, and uh, restaurant concepts and restaurant outlets, we should also always have a plant-based alternative in the menu. So uh, on, our, on our new ship now, Royal Amundsen, we have three different restaurant outlets which we had just created, and, uh, and uh, one of these is called Fredheim, and here we will serve uh, burgers and uh, tacos and dumplings, and in each of these kind of parts of the menu, it will always be at least one plant-based alternative. So we're just facing it in as a natural part of the, uh, of the menu of the offering. And, uh, and uh, we're not saying it's, it's plant-based, but we're saying it's delicious and all these kind of uh, things. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the basic. Um, already two years ago, we, we were testing on uh, our expedition ship Fram. Uh, we had a lecture where the expedition team inspired the guests talking about sustainability, uh, food, plastic in the ocean and all this. And uh, then we served our five course uh, vegetarian menu in the evening. And uh, all our uh, guests were, were able to choose meat or fish if they want, but uh, less than 5% are doing that. So, yeah. so that shows us with, that with, with, uh, with uh, some inspiration and uh, people would like to choose uh, healthy food. So that's two things. Um, we have launched a, a completely uh, vegan menu uh, for our coastal operation. Uh, we are implementing a plant-based option, like I said, in, in, in all uh, outlets. Uh, and and um, on the Norwegian coast uh, as well, we have, uh, it's 11 day from Bergen to Kirkenes to Bergen, and one of the days we are serving uh, as well a vegetarian uh, a meal, um, and just a few who still want to have meat or fish. And the last thing we did is reducing on this 11 day, we had three days of red meat, uh, now we are reducing that to two. So we are changing one of the days from red meat to, to, to local Norwegian fish, which is uh, much nicer. So, so that's uh, some of the basics we are doing and, and, and we are working to look into all kind of areas of the production where we can re replace kind of Minced meat with with uh, with plant-based options, which is at least as good. Now, we all know we have to do this, and sometimes we can sit up here on stage and we can talk about all the great things that that that, that we're doing. But it, you know, I think we also need to recognize how how hard this is. It's not an easy thing for businesses and to ask businesses to make this transition towards a plant-based diet, and and. It'd be good to hear from you guys. You want to do this. You know that we have to do this. But what specific challenges are you facing? The realities on the ground of implementing this and still having to make money. And then how do we overcome those challenges? Uh, I think that um, one of the challenges is to know. Um, I mean, it's easy to remove one environmental problem but we don't want to replace, replace it with a new one. So you need the knowledge. Uh, and the pilot, this pilot helps us a lot with that. Um, the other challenge I think that we uh, are facing is, um, I mean, I think some, sometimes it's easy for us. Uh, we are in the business, we are interested in food, we are interested in these questions, we see the great potential. But I think that lots of people are, I mean, if everybody were interested in changing their lifestyle, we wouldn't no. have a problem. No. But uh, lots of people are not interested in these questions. They don't have the knowledge. They uh, might even think it's fake. It's, um, and I think that is a challenge that we are facing every day. I mean, we, we have changed lots of things on the menus. But the hard thing is to, to make people want to eat these things, even though it's good alternatives, because we are not compromising on the quality. But I think it's, um, th that is a challenge, that not everybody are interested in, um, in these questions. Interested or don't care, and I think we can live in a bubble, and we can say everybody that's at this forum are talking about these, so everybody should know about it, right? And I would assume that a lot of 
the people that visit your business want to have a big burger. A yeah, big, I mean, th- that is basically what we sell. And people you know, people are coming to try it for huge portions, for, yeah. for meat, for a steak and these kind of things. So... For us, for us, I think that we, for the future, we need to to look into what we can do with, the, for example, let's say recipe on a burger patty. Uh, maybe we can reduce the intake of red meat by uh, saying that we should have 30% of vegetables or mushrooms or something in the beef patty. So you're still eating beef for the meat lovers who wants the beef, but we can reduce mm. the intake. Um, I think we have to look on that kind of solutions for maybe smaller portions or we can replace a part of the portion that is 300 grams of meat with uh, 150 grams of meat and the rest will be shrimps or good side orders with uh, vegetarian food or... uh, um, because I think we have lots of guests who are uh, who wants to have meat, and I think that if we just want, um, I mean, it's easy to change the whole menu to green, healthy, sustainable food. But then I think that in the best case, we will get a new, new, a new guests sort of coming to us, yeah. not the same guests. We will lose the guests we have today, and then I mean, we don't have any impact anyway, because no. um, the important thing is to move the huge part, the, the biggest part of the population interested into these questions and to make this, the sustainable choices. Well, we look forward to working with you and trying to figure out how do we do this together. And Freddie? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really good question and it's an important question. And um, uh, because most of us representing the hospitality industry and uh, when people coming to us, they expect we, we should, should be able to uh, meet our guests' uh, needs and expectations. Um, for, our, for, for us, it's, it's a little bit easy because a little bit easier because a lot of our guests is not coming to us to lay by the pool and eat these uh, large buffets and uh, tons of steaks and burgers. They come to us to visit these pristine waters and, and uh, uh, get new knowledge from the scientists uh, on board and, and the expedition team. Uh, but still, they might have the the, the, this one night, when they spend a lot of money, they want to have maybe this steak. Should, be, should, should, we, should they be able to get it? Most probably, yes. But uh, we think the solution is communication. We need to inform, we need to inspire, we, mo- we need to activate our uh, guests so they understand that this is the right choice to take. And I must say that uh, I really believe in, in, in options, so it should be the customer's options to choose differently. Mm. And I think that's very important uh, because then they, then they can change the behavior, not only when they visit our businesses, but also at home, which is really important. Huh? So I think that's important to say. Uh, but uh, but uh, I also think uh, that uh, listening in with all here today and yesterday and, and mingling yesterday and speaking to a lot of people, it's I, I feel sometimes this question is so complex and it's so uh, so so complicated. Uh, f- for me, I don't think it's so complicated. No. Uh, uh, it should be quite easy because. What is it about? It's about creating tasteful food. And that's what we all need, want, tasteful food. So for me, this is, this is, this is I mean, it's, it's not that, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. So please let us take it down and, and, and let's talk about what it is and it's about tasteful food. And that shouldn't be so difficult. So for me, it's just uh, Common sense. And let's not let the complexity freeze us and use that as an excuse not to do something. I, yeah, and um, you know, in 2020, we we want to come back here and we want to be able to report on where we are and we'd like to be able to share with each you know one of you how far we've gotten. And that's what's so important about targets. Are we being ambitious enough? And very briefly, I can see the red you know timer starting to go off. Where do you see yourself being in 2020? Or where would you like to be? I think that um, with, with the brand I represent, I, we have a great opportunity to take this uh, global to everybody working with TGI Fridays. And um, uh, 
that is something I really, really want to do. And people often think that um, we don't have any impact on our brand owners and we just have to do everything they tell us. But it's, I experienced a total opposite. They are really interested in uh, listening to our ideas, our thoughts, take this further, uh, share best practices with other franchisees, uh, as well as we get good ideas back from them. So um, I think that we have a great opportunity to take, the, take uh, good in initiatives. And Freddie, very yeah, briefly. Very short. I think, um, uh, I think if we can come back here in one year, and uh, if we have been walking the talk, and uh, we have been able to inspire other businesses and other our passengers to, to, to make a change also back home, I think then we are really, really successful. So that's, that, that's, that's what is most important to, to us, to, to, to inspire other people to, to live as good as they can. So we will be back next year and we will give an update. And I, I would like to thank you for being those first movers in this space. Freddie and Janneke, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.